Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of Killjoys. A very, very good season premiere that picks up uh, no real clear time frame of how long it's been since season two's finale, but some time has uh, passed. Um, this is actually a very good episode of introducing, like, obviously Dutch has said it. We're going to war with the Hollands, like, it's, I, that's what I want. Um, and it's basically like trying, I mean, they're still trying to root them all out because basically after what they did, you know, what, what Klein did taking out kind of the source, at least the source in the quad, most of them have been taken out with the exceptions of the ones that their Holland come from outside of the quad with that old situation. But it's also a good introduction to see the team, you know, Dutch, Fancy, Alvis, Pre. And Davin kind of all working together like that. It's kind of interesting. Because, I mean, like, we didn't even see, like, pre-working in a bar. Like, that might be something that's, like, not even, like... Because it... I don't think any of the episode took place... No, none of the episode took place in Old Town, which, you know... So, I guess pre, you know, it's like, you know, the bar kind of comes sick. I mean, maybe, like, going forward for the rest of the season, we'll kind of see him pop in and out. But it seems like he's full-blown part of this team and everything. This might also be a good season to find out about him, because obviously season two introduced a lot of aspects about pre. We still haven't touched on, like, something that Davin constantly busted his chops about. Like, oh, yeah. So, what, so what was all this about you being a warlord at certain points in time? So... Um, the team is still divided. Johnny is off with Clara. I mean, he was until they got separated. She's basically trying to take down the factory, the one behind all these modded, because she herself was illegally modded. So she's trying to stop that. Like, there's some people, it seems like, I don't know. Like, it's still hard to tell whether people, there are people who actually do want to voluntarily be modded. Or versus people, I mean, there are a lot of people who don't seem like they want to be. In this particular case, I did like the episode came up. It's like, okay, Johnny has the choice. It's like, oh, you're you're a basic. It's like, oh, we're going to deal with you. It's like, or you can be, you know, it's like, oh, like Ollie, uh, he meets the girl Ollie. And she's like, well, he, he, oh, the other option is we'll mod him up and everything. He's like, you, you are shitty at negotiations. But when the time came, it's like, oh, wow, you can, you can give me this. You can give me this like mod. Oh, man, that's sick. And he's just enjoying it. It's because. Because, as we know, Johnny is a weirdo, and he's just he he loses his shit when it's around technology and stuff. But when he gets his mod and everything, he's he's so hyped up because it comes out with it's like a little like knife laser on like one of his fingers, and he's just so excited. But to the point, he's laying there constantly turning on. Even Ollie, at one point, Ollie's like, "Dude, seriously, he's like, I'm sorry, I can't help it. I like it. It's so awesome." Uh, because basically, it seems like his side of the story is going to be trying to track down. Clara with this whole situation because it's like his her friend that she was supposed to meet up with it's like no 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 I never met up with Clara whatever Clara is into uh like the moment Johnny's like oh I'm trying to help her or whatever like her friend kind of shut uh, what's her name uh Yoki uh kind of shuts him out immediately I guess him being a basic and whatnot because of what Clara wants to do not just her but Johnny wants to help her too and Johnny kind of explains obviously it's because she obviously she helped rescue Davin uh, at the beginning of season two but it's also the fact of the matter is that she helped him with the whole like situation which we haven't hundred percent seen the ramifications for because rewatching season two I think at the time I thought Delcia died it's kind of hard to tell whether she died or not it looked like she lived I mean Johnny's only labeled as missing uh, amongst the rack agents that have disappeared, which I'll kind of get to in a second, but whether Delcia has, I don't, I mean, Delcia probably hasn't really outright said anything, because I guess it'd be too much of an embarrassment to admit that, you know, a, a lowly killjoy took her down like that or something like that, I don't know. And to me, my, it seemed like she was still alive at the end, but maybe she ended up dying off. Like, my initial thought when I originally saw it was, like, I thought she died. But rewatching it, I'm like, it looks like she was still breathing at the end. Like, so she might still be alive. Especially because Johnny left because I, I guess he knew it wasn't enough to kill her. He just wanted to wound her and, like, hey, you know who I am. Or maybe he was like, oh, there's going to be some recordings to show. Whatever the case may be, you know. Because for Johnny, this is all about... He's scared of losing people that's important to him because it, it keeps happening over and over again. He loses people. The first person he lost was his mom. He lost Davin. Granted, Davin came back in his life and everything, but then he got close to Potter and he lost Potter. I mean, more so than anything, you also think about the fact is Johnny lost a lot of people. Like, he'd quickly get attached to people and just as quickly lose them. And Potter was just kind of, I guess, she was just like the final straw. 
uh, in the whole, you know, just in the way things work out, it's just like he lost someone that he really deeply cared for, and he just, he got tired of it, and it's like, Clara, like, he's trying so hard to find Clara, because it's like, for one, she's his friend and everything, but also it's like, he can't lose another person, because it's like, if he feels like if he loses Clara, it's all over, like, that's all there is to it, so he's got to hold on to her, but the thing is with Ollie, too, is like, She's like, I, there's a part of me that kind of hopes you don't find her because the longer he's looking for her, the long, the longer he's looking for Clara, the longer they're able to stay together because outside of Johnny, she doesn't have anyone. Um, I got to figure out who that actress is who plays Ollie because she seems very familiar to me. I just can't quite place her. But uh, she seems very interesting. I'm definitely going to be, uh, I'm very interested to see like where her story kind of goes out uh, throughout this uh, season because it seems like they're setting her up to be like a recurring character. But um. It seems like there's some interesting things going on in Johnny's side of the story. I mean, besides just the story being interesting in itself, but it's like he ends up shooting one of the guys, and it looks like he's modded, but below his skin, it's like, oh, he's got two faces, and it's like there's plasma, so it's like whatever this, like, Holland stuff is, it's it's affecting the modded uh, section, too. And it seems like we also learn it more about more about modded, like... Mod being like modded stuff only came up mainly with the whole Clara story, like w like her part of the story. Like that was only like that one episode you really are talking about. But this episode we learned more about them. There's people who kind of have like who are more uh, what's it, observation types. They're called uh, owls. There was there were other names. I think jumpers are supposed to be kind of like the more sprinters like they're all supposed to represent kind of like the manual labor behind they like basically you get all these different modded groups together like so far there's four there's uh specs who are basically special order uh like i said jumpers owls and i forgot the fourth ones who are just kind of like the brute the, the muscle the thugs of the group so it's like you get a group of them together as like you like a group of all one from each one you've got yourself a pretty good modded crew with you to kind of do stuff they're kind of like i said they're human uh superhuman labor essentially so but the thing is that Ollie, it seems like she's going to have a, uh, a very interesting story because the fact is she doesn't know how she ended up the way she did. She just woke up the way she was. She had Clara's arm, you know, Clara's uh, gun. So it's like you would think the fact is that it's on her would seem that Clara would have something to do with that. Or maybe like she maybe she left that for Johnny that, you know, because like he was tracking a signal and um, Clara's, you know, Anna was tracking it. And so obviously... Um, Ollie subsequently has to follow it and everything because she's trying to find out behind all this situation too, like kind of why she ended up the way she did and stuff like that. So, but um, on Dutch's side of the story, we had them kind of uh, meeting up with this dude named Pippin, who I kind of like and everything. He's like, it's like, oh, how'd you find? Like, it's like, oh, they're looking for devices that will help kind of track down Holland because basically, while John is kind of going off on his own, he's been basically. Um, Showing some things, so it's basically activating some stuff that makes it so they're able to track plasma, you know, specifically the Holland and stuff like that. And um, basically, he found uh, exactly where the device is, uh, Pippin did. And then he's just kind of like, and David's kind of like, Oh, how'd you find it so quickly? He's like, Well, I'm not just good with my hands, they don't call me to mouth for no reason. And then he turns to the Dutch, he's like, Oh, well, you know. you know, I'm good with my hands too because I am, I'm quite the lover and stuff like that, and just like hitting on Dutch extremely hard. Uh, I do love the fact is that the twist on it, it's like this whole situation was just an act. They like Pippin from the very beginning. It's like they never expected the deal to go through 100% without a hitch. The whole deal was a trap from the beginning. Um, it was meant to like they needed someone who'd be kind of enough of a loud mouth to draw enough Holland attention. And it seems like he was the perfect bait to kind of put everything, to kind of put everything, you know, in order for them and then everything kind of draw, uh, at least some of the Holland out. Some of the particular ones ended up being company people too. So it's not even just a ride, it's people within the company too. So, I mean, because even at this point, we've still yet to actually see the, like, the top, top, top heads of the rack and it seems like this season is also going to be more about focusing on the other racks because in my head I always looked at this particular unit of the rack that you know Dutch Johnny and Davin and 
Turin are from and fancy are from this particular one in the quad. I was thinking like that was a head headquarters. Never in my mind did I think like, oh yeah, it's scattered all across different parts of the J system, which would make sense. But I thought this was like the main main headquarters. There are different units all across the J system. So in one particular case, there's a lady named Gray, uh, Miss Gray, who's basically come there. It seems like she's almost like the rack IA because she's investigating like, yo, what's up with all these like killjoys that have gone missing, which Turing kind of points out later on. It's like, no, they're not missing. We know the truth that a lot of them were controlled by Holland. And now that they've gotten free because every, the, uh, the Holland, the green goo on Arkin has been taken care of. They've all run for the hills because like, yo, they know what's coming and they don't want to stick around. I immediately thought like, oh, that, you know, this was connected to that. I was like, oh, they're still out there on their own. But it's like, no, like they the reason why they all abandoned their positions is because of this. But they're trying to keep it hush hush because you don't you still don't know who amongst the rack you can trust. Like it seems they cleared house in this particular case here. Uh, anyone that was infected is obviously no longer infected. And like I said, most of them ran. But what about the other rack things, uh, rack units? Because we do know, like I said, this is affecting like, you know, this whole Holland situation invasion is coming about like all over the system and obviously we heard from that company lady to be like oh yeah we're here to replace all humans so but I also appreciate what Judge was telling that company lady he's like oh yeah telling the story about oh yeah it is obviously every story's got a hero but what really makes a story is the monsters and it's like oh yeah like you think we're the monsters like no 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 you're mistaken you think I was talking about Holland or the monsters of the story it's like no the real monster is me and I'm like that's so badass because another element that we haven't also seen in this uh too is um so far is also Davin's part of things like as we know like Davin has his connection to the Holland and everything, uh, the green slime in general. And uh, we haven't really seen him tap into that. Obviously, he's been using the medicines and stuff like that. But as we learned last season, he can make some head exposed. But I guess he's trying to reserve doing that. It doesn't even seem like they're... I mean, there's. I was about to say, they don't even seem like they're trying to cure them or not. But then I'm like, well, the fact of the matter is it's impossible to cure them unless you kill the source. Kill the source, and then you have them kind of reverting back to themselves, much like Fancy. Um, I'm surprised that hasn't turned into an element of like the mo I mean it feels like that might be the same thing that happened to Anila I would assume it's the fact of the matter is she's so driven insane that she went back to the Holland or maybe it's so ingrained in her it wasn't going to leave that easily but the moment it left Fancy like Fancy kind of gained, regained his sensibilities and he's not driven to become a level 6 again and it's so it I also appreciate that too, that that's completely been dropped because it's like, oh, they would love, refer to as level six as people like them. And now it's like, no, 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 nope. they're Holland. Like, you know, we, I mean, I guess we know what the species is now. So it's like no point referring to them as level sixes anymore because it's just kind of interesting because for the longest time you refer to them as level sixes. And I was like, that name is completely dropped now. So I guess specifically because of the fact is that most of them have kind of been removed from the rack and everything. But nevertheless, nevertheless. I mean, because we see it to a certain extent, like going back to what I was bringing up before with Davin's powers and everything. It seems like he activates one of the ships. I don't know if that's something where it's like, oh, he like talked to Dutch about that or he did that on his own or like what that was about. But he was able to activate one of the ships. Like, how would he know how to do that? Because no one else knows how to activate the other like Holland ships and stuff. So it's like, how did he do that? And then it disappears too. So it's like, what is that all about? Did something happen to Davin to kind of make something switch inside of him or... Like, what What was that all about? I mean, other questions popping up that we never really got, like, touched on at all. It's like, what is the state of Old Town slash Westerly in general? I mean, we spent time on Westerly, but specifically not in Old Town. And it's like, well, when it comes to Old Town, like, after, like like I said, like, what is the state of Delsea? What's the state of the nine families? I mean, especially after the deal that was made, what is that? where does that leave Potter's sister in all of this? family now that Potter is going and everything and but also like what what the, all the dealings that they'll see have made and everything what does that mean for Westerly what does that mean for Old Town like is, is things good things I think I vaguely remember because I, I I do remember her kind of mentioning it I think Dutch just kind of says something that things are still kind of a little shitty uh but still like you know in things get more specific is what I want so um but obviously, at the end of the episode, we have the whole thing where it's like Dutch and Johnny 
I mean, I like to kind of mess with your head a little bit and making it seem like they're actually having a full-blown conversation, but it's just Dutch responding to, like, a message. And Because I knew he wasn't actually there, but I figured it was, like, a transmission or something that they were having live or something like that. It's like, no, she was responding to a recorded message. Because I guess with their current circumstances, with everything kind of being wild and crazy like it is, they can't talk to each other as often. as Like, they can't, like, call each other up and talk like that. Or at the very least, it, they can't talk like that because it will get people's attention because obviously they got the whole um it's great like come that gray lady coming to like investigate everything so she's going to be kind of keeping her eye out so her i mean like dutch and her group have to keep things kind of on the hush hush make sure no one catches on too quickly about everything turns kind of doing his part uh, uh still kind of being an asshole but still obviously playing his part to help out with this whole thing so but the thing is like dutch is like she wants johnny to come back but she can't have him come back until for one until he's ready um the question, like, once again, I don't know if they know exactly what he did. Because I don't think Johnny hasn't told anyone. So it's like, that's once again, that's why I'm like, the fact is there, there's no warrant out for him or anything like that. So it's like, did Del Sea not say anything? Uh, was there no evidence pointing to Johnny doing it? Or, like I said, I don't know. I'm very interested to see what, like, that turns, what that all turns out to be. So maybe we'll kind of get to that next episode. At least relatively soon enough, I would hope. And maybe this all means, like, you know, kind of going back to, like, the Johnny side of things. Like, maybe that means, like, you know, with the modded people and, like, Slime, too. It's like, maybe they're trying to create the perfect host. Maybe, like, being in a normal human body, a, a basics body isn't enough anymore. Maybe, like, being modded, too. Maybe that's a deeper layer to all of this. Maybe, in actuality, the Holland are the ones behind the factory and stuff like that. Maybe it's about building better bodies. Maybe it's about building better arsenals, like creating, you know, modded humans who do, to be your superhuman, you know, tools. I mean, like I said, I don't know. Like, a lot of it's just me talking. So, I mean, you know, a lot hasn't really been brought up. So, we're just going to have to wait to see where everything kind of goes from here. So, but really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe. Live life to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and Goodbye.